The Every 15 Minutes program began in 1996 in Chico, California. At the time, it was based on national statistics that every 15 minutes, someone in the United States dies as a result of a drunk driving collision. This program is specifically aimed at junior and senior aged high school students, and the program is put on toward the end of the school year, specifically during the time of prom, graduations, and the beginning of summer. The program is a two-day event sponsored by the California Highway Patrol and the Office of Traffic Safety. Put together locally with police, fire, school districts, and community members, this program is presented to these students for an education in the consequences of their decisions. Something that will affect their entire lives. It will affect their friends, their families, and their day-to-day -day activities. The program that you are about to see is what the Glendale High School students saw during the presentation at their school. What is your emergency? There's been an accident in front of Glendale High School. I think we got hit. Oh, okay. Is anybody injured? Um, in the other car, a girl from the window, and I think there was a girl who's not really moving. She was just walking. A pedestrian got hit too? Yeah, the pedestrian got hit too. Okay, the police and the paramedics are on the way, okay? Phone call 16 from Broadway and Glendale.
All rise. The Superior Court in Glendale is now in session. The Honorable Stephen K. LaBelle, Commissioner Presiding. Good afternoon. Calling the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orlando Molina. I believe Mr. Molina is in custody. You can get him from lockup, please. We're in the record in the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orlando Molina, felony case number GS052307. Defendant is charged in that uh, felony complaint with uh, four felony counts that read as follows. It's alleged that on or about May 23rd, in count one, in the county of Los Angeles, the crime of gross vehicular manslaughter while intoxicated was committed in violation of Penal Code Section 191.5A, a felony that was committed by Orlando Molina, who did willfully and without malice kill Melissa Legaspi and Melody Babakanians, a human being. The court notes that alcohol-related motor vehicle crashes kill someone every 15 minutes and injure someone every two minutes in the United States. Yearly, over 16,000 people in the United States die in alcohol-related motor vehicle crashes. That represents almost 40% of all traffic-related deaths. Statistically, the risk of being involved in an alcohol-related crash is greater for young people than for older people. Mr. Orlando, it's tragic that you have to hear these gut-wrenching statistics after the fact instead of having learned the consequences of driving under the influence beforehand. If you had and had listened to those terrible consequences, perhaps you would not be before this court today. It is a judgment and sentence of this court that you shall serve 15 years in the state prison. You are remanded to the custody of the Sheriff's Department for transfer to the Department of Corrections to serve your sentence. Court stands in recess. On the first day of the event, Two teachers are made up to represent the Grim Reaper, the figure that most people associate with death. The Grim Reaper removes a student from a classroom every 15 minutes, every 15 minutes representing the death of someone at the hands of a drunk driver. Attention Glendale High School. Today, Tenny Garibian was killed in an alcohol-related traffic collision. I was nervous about when I would get pulled out. When the first one went off, I was like, is it my turn to go? And every single time it would ring, I'd get scared. I don't know why, but I would. When I got pulled out of the class, I'm like, oh, I wasn't ready for this. I have to go. And I walked out with him and I never got to say goodbye or I never really got to look back at anyone. When the Grim Reaper came in, I could already tell that some of my classmates, they were like, they got scared. Everyone just quieted down and they just stopped everything. It's my duty to inform you, Stephanie Hagberg has been killed by a drunk driver today. She's someone we'll never forget. She was a loving daughter, sister and friend. Stephanie loved dancing as it showed in her involvement with Glendale High's nationally ranked dance drill team. Stephanie was interested in attending USC and majoring in physics, accounting, or engineering. She was always a hard worker that loved the way things in her life were going. Stephanie was a bright, wonderful girl who will be greatly missed, but never forgotten. After the student is removed from the classroom, the student becomes a member of the living dead. At that point in time, there is no further communication with their friends, family, or any of the other students on campus. As the students are being removed and become the living dead, pre-crash cars are placed at the scene of the location for the students viewing. This is done in cooperation with the local police and fire department and towing agencies. As the vehicles are put in place, students are then made up and fashioned of simulated injuries as a result of this accident. When they were putting the makeup on me, I was like, okay, this is going to look fake. This isn't going to seem real. And then when they were all done, I looked in the mirror and I kind of shocked myself. I was like, wow, 
this does look real. And it kind of hit me, like, today's the day, you know, like, there's no turning back. I think the makeup did it for everybody. So how are you feeling? Scared, but I'm trying Christine and I were both in the car, and we kind of started freaking out just because it was so real, and we had never imagined it would be that real. Like, watching Berenine, she was actually getting scared, and so we got scared also. Oh, my God. For, like, a couple hours, we were sitting there, like, watching them get the makeup on. But I think that seeing Melissa on the ground with all the blood, that was pretty real, especially since I was really close to her. And so seeing her on the floor, it was, it, it was not fun. After the students are placed in the vehicles, a simulated 911 call is broadcast over the school public address system. At that time, the juniors and seniors are released from class and asked to report to the front of the school. I was just watching the whole thing happen, and it was so fast and quick that you never really got to think about what was going on. I was, I was sitting on the curb, and I looked across the street at my friends, who were the living dead. I saw one of my friends, Yashar, who was, he's not the type to get upset. He's always laughing, but seeing him so upset made me so upset, and I started to sob. The whole time I was standing on the curb, I was watching Melissa like, why aren't they picking her up first? Why aren't they picking her up first? And then I realized, well, she's dead. She, she can't be picked up first. They have to save everybody else. When I heard the Jaws of Life cracking the metal of the car, I got kind of scared. So I was like, okay, um, this sounds like it's a little too close to me. And they started shattering the glass and it was hitting the sheet. It was scary, but at the same time, I felt comforted because the fireman was next to me saying, it's okay, you're going to be fine. Don't worry about anything. I'm right here. It was, it was comforting that he was there. And when I was laying there on the ground, it was really sad because all I could think about was my mom. And it re I realized, like, you don't get a second chance. Like, I didn't, I could have actually died that day and not been able to say bye to my parents or say I love you to them. I was just thinking about my friends and how me being dead would impact them like I wouldn't be able to walk across the stage with them I wouldn't be able to go to prom with them like it's weird that one person dying can affect so many other people I had a chance to actually see it from across the street and um, I knew everything was fake and, and I knew all that and, but the thing that really got me was when the coroners came by and threw the white sheet on top of her that kind of shocked me for a second I thought they were going to put her in a body, but I had to leave before they did that, you know. It was pretty powerful. When they were wrapping up Melissa, I was basically thinking, what if she really died and I would never get to see her again? Being that I am a parent, I wanted to make the decision myself to attend from day one because allowing my child to do something like this, I wanted to be part of it. I wanted to see what she was looking at and this way when she would get home I would be able to talk to her about what she went through at that moment and what I was feeling at that moment. She was a driver that was extricated from a two vehicle PC with one fatality on the sidewalk. When I was in the hospital there were doctors talking saying medical terms I couldn't understand and for a second it felt like I was actually injured. My uncle is not it's the type of person where they will show that they're scared or worried. I've always looked up to him as like this very tough, strong guy who can take anything. And after he told me, he was like, when I saw you, the makeup looked so real, I was actually scared that something was really wrong with you. So it kind of, it shook him up a bit. When we were in the court and we saw Orlando come in, I felt terrible. I realized like it could happen to anyone. And Orlando was such a nice guy. But if you're a nice guy, things can still happen to you, and you, you still would get in trouble. Fifteen years in jail, that's losing your whole college career. It's losing your whole beginning of your life. You have to live with that for the rest of your life. It's not unusual for me at all to get cases with a blood alcohol content over 0.15 and over 0.20, many, many over 0.20. That's somebody who's pretty blasted when they're driving. That's how people end up dead. During the evening portion of the program, the living dead or core group are then taken to a hotel conference room. All phones, pagers, text message capabilities are removed because the student, if they're dead, 
has no way of communicating with the family. At the retreat, the students have the opportunity to listen to an individual who's been affected by a drunk driving accident. I didn't expect it to be the person that actually caused the death. So when I found that out, I was, I was glad to hear from his side because I've heard stories from the other end, like people that have lost someone in their life. My life has changed forever from that decision to, uh, to drive home that, that night. Um, I uh, was charged with gross vehicular manslaughter. I'm now a felon. Um, the six months in county jail were the worst six months of my life. I didn't think I'd make it through it. To see that it actually happens to real people and that he didn't mean to do it and he was a responsible person before that, it was really upsetting to see how, like, how destroyed his life was because of one dumb decision. I can't find work. To tell you the truth, I was the executive chef of a fine dining restaurant before this happened and uh, ha haven't had any difficulty finding work prior to this accident, and now nobody will hire me. It's everybody does a background check because there's such liability in, in hiring a felon. By seeing his, his face, he almost looked, he was so tired with his life and going through all the, the destruction of his life that he almost looked dead himself. You don't have to be a criminal. You don't have to carry a gun. You don't have to be a violent person. But you can kill somebody by just being irresponsible and reckless and drinking. He didn't intentionally kill them, but he did it and he has to deal with it. He has to replay that memory in his mind over and over and over again, and it's never going to leave him. He's never, his life's changed forever. It's never going to go back to the way it was before. The students then have the opportunity to share their feelings amongst each other and counselors who are at the overnight retreat and express what their feelings were while observing and being involved in the make-believe drunk driving accident. The retreat was a good closure because there were so many emotions um, and so many thoughts going through my head that I needed someone to vent to. And it was nice to be able to talk about it with the other students who were involved and feeling the same way. I didn't have the courage to like raise my hand and say it and I, like other people were saying it for me. So just the fact that I knew that I wasn't alone in what I was thinking, how I was feeling, it was comforting but still very emotional. Additionally, the students are given the opportunity to discuss and understand the criticalness of making decisions as they grow into adulthood. This teaches the responsibilities that even insignificant decisions can make. Not the fact that you alone are the drunk driver, but maybe just getting in the car or having a friend who's in that situation and trying to help them. I heard stories and I never thought they were, they were real. I thought they were just made up sometimes, but when I heard their stories, it just made me cry and it made me sad and made me miss everybody in my life. And I was hoping that I would never, like, nothing would ever happen to me like what happened to them because... I would be so upset with myself and I'd be upset to have to put my parents or my friends through that because I would never want them to have to live through my mistake or my not thinking and it puts them in a situation where they have to live with it. That's probably when it started to actually hit me. I started thinking about everything that we had done that day and it all just sunk in. I found myself texting her on her cell phone that I'm missing you already. And I caught myself doing that saying, gee, I'm, I'm writing this as if she's actually gone because she is so hardcore into texting. When I didn't get a message back, it was that sense of saying she's actually dead now because she's not responding at this point. Suddenly, you see a car coming in front of you and the car drifts over onto the wrong side of the road and it's starting to coming almost head on into you. At the end of the evening, the students sit down to write a letter to their parents or loved ones, giving them the opportunity to express feelings that they have that they didn't get a chance to share prior to their make-believe death. I was just thinking, what would I tell her if I would never talk to her again, if I would never get to see her again? I wanted to make sure that she knew how much I cared for her and how much I would miss her. But then I also wanted to tell her not to like feel bad, to keep going with life and live life.
the way she would want to. I wrote my letter to my parents. They're two very powerful people in my life. Like, they've made the biggest impact on me. And I'm a typical teenager. I say, I hate you. I never want to talk to you. I don't want to be like you. But, you know, deep down, it's like, they're my parents. And without them, I honestly don't know where I'd be. Writing the letter was the hardest thing because I just wanted to write everything I could because it was the last thing I ever got to write to my parents. I wanted to make sure that even though that happened to me, that they were still proud of me. And even though I didn't get to do all the things they wanted me, like, that's what I wish I could do. I was crying so much because I thought that was the last thing I'd ever say to them. And it was so hard for me to write that to my parents. On the second day of the event, the living dead are then brought back to the school, where they join all the juniors and seniors in an assembly. A videotape is played reviewing the previous day's events, and some of the living dead have the opportunity to read their letters that they wrote the previous night to their loved ones. The emotional response from the audience when the casket came in was almost unbelievable. I didn't realize everybody would react. You could like feel in the auditorium that it kind of sunk into everybody. And they pictured their loved ones and their friends in that casket. They really realized what it was about. The casket that you see represent everyone on the stage. And the other 15,900 plus people that die every year is a result of driving under the influence collisions. Notice I said collisions, not accidents. Because if you get in a wreck and you're drunk, it's not an accident. Dear Mom and Dad, every 15 minutes, someone in the United States dies or is seriously injured in an alcohol-related incident. Today, I died. I've often said that when I grow up, I don't want to be anything like you two. Truth be told, you are my role models. Mom, get better for me. Make sure to always have good memories of me pushing you to go on. Dad, I'm always going to be with you no matter what. I'll always be daddy's little girl. Don't ever forget that. I love you both. Don't think about what my life could have been. Think about how you two have impacted the 17 amazing years you gave me. Love always, Barry Dean. Dear mom, every 15 minutes someone in the United States dies or is seriously injured in an alcohol-related accident. I died today, no more tomorrow. I'm sorry I couldn't make you proud by walking across stage. I'm sorry I couldn't show you the man you've raised me to be. I'm sorry for any time I ever made you feel an ounce of sadness because it was the last thing I ever really wanted to do. You mean the world to me, and all I ever wanted to do was make you proud and happy to call me your son. This morning I said goodbye to you like it was any other day. And right now, I would give anything to be with you and hug you and say goodbye and never let go. I don't even remember if I told you I love you when I last saw you. Hopefully this teaches a lesson to all that any day you could be gone and you won't get another chance to revive your unfinished business. I'm praying more people will be more responsible after all of this. Every person that walks into your life is a lesson waiting to be learned. Love always, Roxy. If you make a decision, and it's the wrong decision, you're responsible for the consequences. If you make a decision, and you're not around, it's your family, it's your friends that are going to have to suffer those consequences. So before you just jump, do something, think about it. Now, the big thing today and the big theme is drunk driving. I, by no stretch of my imagination, would believe that after all of you see this, that you're all going to go out and stop drinking. I know for a fact that you guys are going to go drinking, okay? It's human nature. It's part of being a kid, part of growing up. You want, to exp you want to experiment with it. You're not going to listen to us. But what I am emphasizing is if you decide to make that decision, don't get behind the wheel. If you're at a party and your ride home is the guy that's been drinking, don't get in the car. Call somebody up. Get a ride. Walk home. Because the guy that's behind the wheel, if he crashes and you're in that car, you're going to get hurt too. You need to think about your decisions. They could jeopardize your life, could jeopardize the way you, you live your life. Think about it. 